Welcome back to Fundamentals of Bioinformatics. Uh, this lecture will begin a three-part series where I will give you a quick introduction to programming in the Python 3 language. My goal with these lectures is not to turn you into a programmer, but to demystify it a little bit, show you that it is uh, very accessible, and hopefully to whet your appetite to explore this a little bit more. Having some basic programming skills, whether it's in Python or R, the language doesn't really matter so much, um, but having those skills will really help you to automate bioinformatics analyses that you're working on, saving you a lot of time, and it'll also increase your value to potential employers. So I strongly encourage you to invest a little bit of time in learning how to program. The resources that I'm going to use in these lectures are the Python 3 programming language. Um, and so specifically, we are programming in Python 3. And if you want to be able to follow along, you'll need to be working in Python 3. Um, the uh, aspects of what we're doing here will not work with Python 2. Um, and Python 2 at this point is an outdated language. And so you really should be using and learning Python 3. I'm going to be following along with the intro to python.org website um, over the next few lectures. For the most part, I will just be going straight through the, mater the material as they present it. Um, and so that's a great resource um, for you to pull up um, to read along with watching these lectures. They also present a number of exercises and challenges in there. Um, that I think will help you to um, solidify some of these ideas. Um, we're going to be doing all of our work here in Jupyter Notebooks, um, and that is also what the intro to python.org site is built on. These are a great tool um, to use in your um, research work um, and also in learning to program. Um, there are a few caveats, like there's a few things that you need to watch out for when you're using Jupyter Notebooks that, um, uh, that work a little bit differently than if you were writing a program um, in, say, a Python script. Um, but I'll touch on those a little bit um, as we jump in and start using this. So take a minute, maybe pause the video if you need to, and go ahead and open up a Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to do that my, on my own right now. Um, this Jupyter Notebook could be um, something that you are accessing through, um, through a server. So if your university gives you access to Jupyter Notebooks, um, you could use one there. Um, you may have this installed locally on your computer. It doesn't really matter so much um, as long as it is a Python 3 notebook. I'll start out my um, I'll start out my interactive demo by showing you how to check uh, and confirm that you're using Python 3. All right, so I've got my Jupyter notebook open now. You can see the Jupyter logo over here. I have named my notebook, so I've called this Bio 450 Python Dash Part One. Um, and aside from that, I've just got a fresh Jupyter notebook here. Now, I mentioned the first thing that I would show you how to do is just confirm that you're running Python 3. Um, so go ahead and copy what I'm doing here. Don't worry too much for the moment um, about what I'm doing. But I typed import sys and then print sys.version. This is just a way that you can find out what version of Python you're currently running. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click run. And you can see that what gets printed out is that I am running Python 3.6.12. So really the main number that matters here is that three in the beginning. Um, as long as you've got a version of Python 3 there, you should be good to go to follow this tutorial. Um, now, the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to print some text to the terminal. Um, and the first thing that somebody typically does when they're learning a new Python or when they're learning a new programming language is they um, uh, they write what they call like a hello world script or a hello world command. Um, and this is pretty simple. So if we type print, open parenthesis, hello world, um, that will 
Um, as of right now, nothing has run yet, but when I come up here and click run, you can see that what happens is it prints the text hello world to the screen. So pretty simple. Um, so now what I wanna focus um, the majority of this lecture on is variables, strings, and numbers. Um, and so a variable is a way of storing some bit of information for Python to use. And so the way that you would define this is you would provide some name for a variable. And so I'm gonna name a new variable here, message. And the way that you create a new variable in Python is simply by setting it equal to something. And so I, if I type message equals hello world, what is happening is this string of text, hello world, is being stored in a new variable that is created that's called message. And so if I click run now, you'll notice nothing was printed here, um, but this does seem to have done something because I have seen this new number pop up here over on the left. Um, and I'll talk about what that is in just a second. Um, but what happened is I stored that, that string of text, hello world, in this variable message, and I can use that later on. And so again, I'll hit run. And so now if I say print message, it prints hello world out to the screen. Now, these numbers that are showing up over here are basically telling us the order that these cells in the notebook are executed. Um, and so if I were to come back up to this one again and press run, you'll see that that incremented to the number five now. So it did the same thing. And again, just printed hello world to the screen. Um, but now this is telling me that this is basically the fifth time I have run some Python code in this notebook. Um, okay, so variables do have some rules in how they can be named. Um, probably most important for right now um, is that they can contain letters, numbers, and underscores. Um, they can start with a letter or an underscore, but they can't start with a number. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll just show you some variations on this. Um, so like we saw above, that's an acceptable variable name. Um, if I were to put, say, an underscore in here, that's also an acceptable variable name in Python. Um, if I were to start this with a number, that's actually not allowed in Python. So variables can't start with numbers. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to get a syntax error when I try and do that. And so what is happening there is it's is Python is essentially telling me that it doesn't understand what I provided as input. The the what I provided as input here is not valid Python syntax. Um, so if I go ahead and just delete that and get back message equals hello world, um, then I'm back to uh, working code and you can see that that syntax error went away. Um, something that's also good to know now um, is if I were to do something like, um, say, forget what I called that, and I were to think, oh, I must have abbreviated message MSG, maybe somewhere down lower in my code, and I were to try and run that, I would get what Python calls a name error. Um, so what it, what's happening here is it's saying that the variable name message has not been defined. Um, and so this can uh, commonly happen if you have a typo somewhere. Um, so like you have a typo when you enter a variable name. So these are two good errors to be aware of as you're getting started. That's syntax error and this name error because those are definitely some of the first types of errors that you might run across. Now, another thing to think about that's a little bit, or another thing to be aware of that's a little bit counterintuitive as you're getting started here is 
typically when we get a message, um, you know, if this is an email um, or, or a, you know, text message or some, something that somebody sends, we would start reading at the top and we would read to the bottom. When Python prints out error messages for you, it's a little bit counterintuitive because often what you want to be doing is starting at the bottom. Um, and so you can see like the last line here is where it says name messages not defined. And that is something that is relatively accessible. We can understand that. This information up here, you know, name error, traceback, most recent call, IPython input 10-8A. You know, at this point, I don't really know what's going on. Um, and so just a, kind of a tip to keep in mind as you're getting used to looking at error messages in Python is that you typically start reading them from the bottom. This will become more important when you start to see messages that are longer. Um, and looking at error messages is part of programming. So it doesn't mean that, you know, you have failed or you've done something terribly wrong. Um, it just means that something went wrong. You need to look at that message, understand what it's telling you and correct it. It's something that it, it's just a constant in programming that you'll be dealing with these types of things. Um, okay. So this first variable that we defined message is um, in Python, it is known as a type uh, called a string. And so that effectively means like a string of text. And that's why I was using that phrase. Um, you can define strings in Python as I've done here. So message equals and then this double quote, hello world and double quote. Um, but Another way to define mess, uh, strings is, um, for example, I can create a new variable called another message. Um, I can do this with single code, uh, single quotes. Um, and so if I do um, this, this will, um, I can do, um, this is a string just like that first message that I defined was a string. You might wonder why you um, would care about this. Um, usually this would come up um, like you might prefer one or the other here, um, either double quotes or single quotes. Um, if you, for example, had a string that needed to have either double quotes or single quotes in it. Um, so for example, if I had another string and we'll call it message three, um, and I wanted to do something like, um, define a string like this that contains double quotes in it. Um, then it can be convenient to use single quotes to define that string. Um, the one thing, that, one thing that you cannot do is you can't mix them. Um, and so if I try and do this, you'll see that I get a syntax error again. Um, and so what Python is saying here is that it um, encountered an end of line while scanning a string. Um, and so what that, what that means is that it encountered this double quote. So it knew that I was trying to create a new string, um, but it never saw another double quote. And so it said, I started this string, but I never ended this string. Now, there are a number of things that you can do with strings in Python. Um, for example, you can do things like convert them to uppercase. Um, and so I can, um, for example, print that first message in uppercase. I can print that first message in all lowercase. Um, and Python has a bunch of um, built-ins on this, um, on the string. 
Um, another thing that you could do is um, you can join strings and you would do this using the plus operator in Python. Um, and so if I have message one equals hello and message two equals Greg, then what I can do is I could say Um, so what I did here was I, I said um, print message one plus a single space plus message two. Now Python is going to do exactly what we say here. So if I didn't include that single space, and so maybe what I'll do is I'll copy all that and I'll put it down here. Um, actually, I don't need to define those variables again, so I'm not going to include those. Um, but if I delete that single space, you'll see that it just concatenates everything together and doesn't put a space between it. Okay, so, um, so strings are the first data type to be aware of in Python. Um, the next one that you should be aware of is um, integers. And so the way that we would define an integer in a variable would be to do something, um, say, like x equals 1. And now if I say print x, that will give me the, that will print the, the value 1 to my terminal. Um, I could define another variable. Um, so I'll call this one y. Um, and this time I'll put the print statement in the same cell. Um, and if I print that, you'll see that it prints the value of that variable again to the terminal. Um, Python defines um, a number of mathematical operators that you can apply to, vary, uh, to integers. Um, and so for example, I could say print x plus y I'm going to put a space, some spaces in there. Those are optional, um, but it's just helpful for reading. Um, so if I say print x plus y, that's going to give me 3. If I say print x minus y, that's going to give me negative 1. Um, the ast oops. Um, the asterisk is your multiplication operator. Um, and so that would be x times y would give me 2. And the uh, slash is my division operator. Um, and so if I do x divided by y, I'm going to get a different type of value back. I'm going to get a f what Python calls a floating point value back. And what that means is that it is a non-integer number, so um, a, a, any number with a decimal point. Um, before we move on, let's look at one other operator that is a little bit less intuitive, um, and that is the double asterisk operator. Um, so if I do x double asterisk y, that's going to give me 1. Um, so it may not be intuitive from this uh, what exactly I'm doing there, but this is the exponentiation operator. And so what this did was um, this raised x to the power of y. Um, so this maybe will be a little bit more clear if I use a different value for x. And so if I raise the value 3 to the power of y, um, recall that y is equal to 2 right now, um, so 3 to the second power is 9, and so that's the operation that's being carried out there. Um, another thing to notice from that last cell is that you can mix um, variables and values when you're doing these kinds of operations, and so you don't just have to multiply um, variables 
by other variables or you don't have to apply these operations um, with two variables. Um, you can do um, a mixture or you could do um, even, um, you could just uh, input two variables, um, or sorry, two values directly. And so here I'm raising three to the power of 10. Um, and so that is a quick intro to the integers. Um, and now I want to circle back and I want to talk about the um, floating point numbers that I mentioned above. Um, so a floating point number, like I said, is any number that contains a decimal in Python. Um, and so I could say um, a equals 0 0.5, b equals 100.1, I'll define those um, and then I could do things like print a plus b. Um, those same mathematical operators that I showed you for the integers also work for the floating point numbers. Um, now I just realized that I have been using a shortcut here, a keyboard shortcut to run these cells. Um, so in the beginning I clicked the run button a few times and that was how I executed a cell. Um, what I did here was I uh, hit shift return. Um, and so that is a shortcut for running a cell, for clicking this run button. Um, and um, you can see that you can get information on the keyboard shortcuts um, if you come up to help and click on keyboard shortcuts. And so that will tell you what um, all the keys are on your specific keyboard. So I'm working on a Mac OS, I'm working on Mac OS right now. Um, and so it's showing me the um, information uh, as it relates to my Mac OS keyboard. I just hit escape to get out of that window. Um, now, the last thing that I want to show you in this first lecture is um, how to define comments in Python. And so comments would be uh, something that you put in your code that you don't necessarily want to run. Um, and so um, you anything that starts with a hash symbol or a pound symbol in uh, Python code will not be run. Um, and so you would often do something like uh, put information, um, so uh, like some sort of a description in here. So maybe like define um, freezing Um, all right, and so here you can see like I'm defining some variables, I'm calling them freeze and boil, and I'm just putting a comment in here that describes what I'm doing. So define freezing and boiling points in degrees Fahrenheit. As we start doing a little bit more advanced uh, coding, um, the role of comments will become more important. Um, but mostly these, um, these are intended to just help you remember what you're doing um, if you come back and are reading this code at some point in the future, um, or if somebody else is reading your code. These are kind of little clues that can just help somebody interpret what you're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up this first Python lecture um, at this point. Um, I would recommend working through the Intro to Python chapter on, um, it is called Variables, Strings, and Numbers, and that'll give you some exercises that you can work through to experiment a little bit with these concepts. Um, last thing I'll do is I'm just gonna save this notebook um, so that I have this next time I come back to my Jupyter server.